Hello everybody. Um, if you're watching this from home, hello, welcome. Um, this is the live kind of run through of science education. Um, it's a really nice course. It's since changed. So I'm going to go through the changes um, to first year, go through the types of modules that you'll be covering um, and some tips and tricks if you're starting in DCU and for teaching science and maths in DCU. So I'm going to just share my screen and I'm going to run through it. It's a really brief um, run through of the course. I wish I could talk longer about it, um, but we're going to get it covered. So if you have any questions, just put them in the chat box for now and I'll get to you at the end. Um, but that's the course code DC203. So that's really important for your CAO. I'd write that down. Um, so science education. There's so many different courses to do with science education in different colleges. These are just the points. Um, they're going to fluctuate from year to year. Usually science education in DCU stays between 4.10 to 4.30, in and around that bracket there. So it's a good bit lower than the other science education courses, which is nice. It's easily attainable, hopefully, for most of you. Um, so yeah, the reason it's so low is because the demand for maths and physics teaching isn't as large as, say, business or law and such. It's a nice small course. It tends to be around 20 of us in the course uh, from year to year. Um, in my course, there's about 15 at the moment. So really nice and small. You get to know everyone. It's like a little friendship group from day one. Um, we often meet up in the mornings and grab coffee and go to classes together, study together. So that's the benefit of it being a small course. And also the points are a lot lower than other courses too. So there's two benefits straight away. Um, why science education? Um, and I'll go into detail on why science education in DCU in particular. But just for now, science education. First of all, in school, I was really interested in maths and science. Now, I was never the best at it. I wasn't a hate one student all the time, um, but I enjoyed them. And that's the most important thing. In college, some modules are going to be very difficult. And if you don't love what you're doing, you've no motivation. If you're only choosing something based on what you're good at right now, it's not going to stand to you when you're in college because there will be difficult moments. So choose something that you thoroughly enjoy, genuinely enjoy. And for me, maths and science were two subjects that, yeah, I do enjoy them. May not be the best, but there's help available to me so I can get through it. Um, I also really enjoyed lab work in school, especially now as a teacher after doing placement. I love labs even more, teaching them and doing them with students. So that's another thing. You will have labs in first and second year. Um, and they're real labs, like college labs. You're like a scientist, you know. Um, they're not the junior cert, even cert kind of style ones. You're doing lab reports and such. And then I was inspired by my teachers, so I know we all have our favourite teachers. Um, mine were my maths and physics teachers, so they definitely influenced me to be a teacher myself. Um, seminars. So what you're at today, career talks, CAO talks, they kind of motivated me and made me realise, do you know what? STEM careers are achievable um, because I was seeing girls my age talking about science education, were passionate about STEM in college. And I was thinking, OK, if they're able to do it, why can't I? Um, I know imposter syndrome is a major thing with science subjects, but genuinely just by listening to other students and going to open days and experiencing a little taster of it yourself, you'll realise that it is enjoyable and it's a great option. And then the third thing is career prospects. So the science education course in DCU is a science degree. So you're doing physics, maths, chemistry, and it's also a teaching degree. So you don't have to stay in teaching. Teaching may not be suited to you forever. You can go into the industry. And in third year, you have an opportunity to experience life in industry. And I'll go through that in a bit. Um, so you get the best of both worlds. You're a scientist and mathematician, and you're also a teacher. So that's brilliant. Now, why science education in DCU in particular? So you're a qualified teacher in four years. OK, so after you graduate, you can just sign up with the teaching society and then you're a teacher okay but in other colleges you have to do your four-year degree and then you have to do a PME your master's in education so that might be five six years so in DCU it's four years 
in other colleges, it tends to be five to six years, especially in UCD and Maynooth in particular. They were the two options I was looking at as a student um, and they're five to six. So cutting your time by a lot there. Um, it's an incredible opportunity to be in the science education course in DCU because we have paid internships in third year. And I'll run through that in a bit, as I said. And also international science events. I went to one in first year. I'm going to show you that as well. And then the support for STEM students is invaluable. We have free maths tutoring. We have a free writing centre to help with essays. Um, it's brilliant. And while you're doing labs, you have tutors and lab technicians to help you always. Um, I currently set up um, a science education peer mentor programme. So in first year, you will have a fourth year or third year peer mentoring you and helping you and guiding you, giving you advice in first year. So the amount of support you're getting from DCU straight away, it's incredible and it's brilliant. So yeah, what does first year look like? So imagine you got your CAO, you've gotten your points, you're accepted into DCU. What is first year going to be like? Well, it's a nice timetable, very different to secondary school. Um, if we see here, there's a lot of gaps. So this was my first year timetable. There's a lot of gaps throughout the day. Like you can see here on Monday, from 12 o'clock to four o'clock, you've nothing. On a Thursday, 9 a.m. and then the rest of the day you have off. So in school, it's kind of a nine to four straight. In college, you've loads of little gaps. So make sure to make use of that time. You can join some clubs and societies. You can look at them on the DC website. You can study, go to the library, get your notes together. Um, because when you go home, you're always tired. So I would make use of those gaps even though you have a small selection of modules in first year, compared to say second and third year, it does build, um, don't get used to just killing time throughout the day. Make use of it, you will be busy. Okay, an important note on first year options. So the course has changed since I started. Originally, you were able to choose maths and physics together. So you specialize in two, maths and physics, maths and chemistry, and chemistry and physics. It has changed. You can only choose to specialise in maths and physics together or maths and chemistry. So this course you do not specialise in biology and you cannot specialise in chemistry and physics together. So that's a really important note. Um, there are other courses within DCU that you can specialise in teaching biology as a secondary school teacher. Um, we definitely have biology and PE together. Um, and biology and maths, I'm not quite sure. We'd have to double check. But for this course in particular, maths and physics or maths and chemistry. OK. And that means that for junior cert, you can teach junior cert science, junior cert maths. And then for leaving certificate, leaving cert physics or chemistry and then leaving cert maths. So four subjects there you can teach. OK, year one. What are you going to study? Well, on the DC website, it says you're going to do introductory chemistry. So say if you're specialising in chemistry and maths, these are the four key concepts that you're going to be going through in first year. Now I've broken that up for you. So the topics that you're going to cover include atomic structure, electronic configuration, chemical bonds, orbital shapes. I specialise in physics, so this is gibberish to me. But if you're doing leave insert chemistry, you know these. These are all keywords that you know from your course. So it's a little bit of revision from Leave Insert. They start from the very beginning. Please don't worry about that. Um, and then they build up throughout the year. So by second year, you should have a strong foundation in chemistry. I would recommend you keep your notes from fifth and sixth year chemistry and maths um, because it will really stand to you. So that's chemistry in a nutshell. Again, for labs, you'll have tutors and lab technicians there to help you. And for your theory modules, you'll have your tutors and lecturers there to guide you through that. OK, for physics then. So you're doing physics and maths together and um, you'll be covering light and optics again leaving cert style there, motion and energy, electricity and magnetism. I know magnetism and electricity, it's a big section in the leaving cert. Uh, but again, they do start from the very beginning. The universe, that was a really nice module. Um, and then physics labs. And then in mathematics, you have sets, inequalities, quadratics, trig, functions. Again, a lot of leaving cert stuff there. They do start from the beginning, I promise. And problem solving. 
Um, the new Leaving Cert maths and the new Leaving Cert, or sorry, the new Junior Cert maths really focuses around problem solving. Um, and the big long questions that are worth loads of marks are problem solving questions. So that module there in first year will help you learn how to break down problem solving, create your own problem solving questions. Um, and it's brilliant, invaluable. And you get to actually solve major problems as part of the assessment. So that's grand. That is first year in a nutshell in terms of the theory. So chemistry, physics and maths. I'll go through the teaching in a second, okay? I know maths and physics and chemistry, it seems quite daunting and I'm aware of that because I was in your shoes, but here's all the college supports. As I said, we have a maths learning centre, so you can book in free tutoring uh, sessions whenever you want. It's on the DCU website and there's people there in the maths learning centre that have done the modules you're going to do and they've been through it and they can explain it and go through it and help you study for your exams. So you're not alone when it comes to maths. Also, it's such a small group within your course that you'll help each other out. Um, so don't worry about that at all. Math, science and general STEM societies. There is a gal STEM society. So if you're a girl who is doing science education, it's a great society. It's like a study group. You can have a few snacks. Um, we're all brain boxes in that society. So it's a really, really good one. You should uh, definitely join that. And then for your essays and any sort of writing, we have a writing centre for that and they'll help you with that. And then your lab modules again, lab technicians and tutors and also people in your course that can help you too. OK, all the college supports. Brilliant. And they're so useful. I've used every single one of them at some point. Um, and I definitely think in first year from the get go, try them out and see if they work for you. OK. At the end of first year, I had the amazing experience of going to the London International Youth Science Forum. OK, so at the time it was COVID time, so it was on Zoom, but you can go in person now. You can apply for this from the end of first year and it had guest speakers who won Nobel Peace Prizes. They're leading doctors and researchers in their field. It was incredible. Um, I think it was a week and a half long. And there was so many talks about modern technology, modern advancements in science. Um, and it was really motivating to me to see that there was young people there that had done incredible things. Um, and DCU would support you in that. And they share incredible stories about where they are today, how they started. Um, and it's amazing. And I would highly recommend that you sign up for this if you get into science education in DCU. OK, so that's one opportunity. I'll talk about the placement then. But teacher training in college, okay? Um, it starts off really nice. So your first kind of teaching module is about you. So as a learner, let's look at it from a learning standpoint. How did you learn best in school? What did your teachers do to help you learn? Then as a student and as a future teacher, so what do you think you can do to help your students? So a lot of reflective journaling, uh, a lot of kind of looking within yourself, first of all, before you learn any theories, what do you have already? Really nice module. And then you start getting into the nitty gritty. So lesson planning, schemes of work. So a scheme of work would be, okay, from September to December time, what am I gonna cover and why? Why in that order, that kind of thing, breaking that down. And then at the end of first year and through second year, you'll have micro teaching sessions. So that's you in a little group, maybe of two or three, you create a lesson and in front of your class group, you'll actually do that lesson and pretend you're the teacher. And it's really good fun. Um, it's not nerve wracking at all because you're with your small class group and you're all there to support each other. But it's a great opportunity for you to just get confidence standing up and presenting and making it interesting, changing your tone of voice, using your hand gestures, all that good stuff, little tiny things. They make a huge difference when you're teaching. And then studying a range of teaching and learning theories. So that's a lot of new content and reading and essay based stuff. But it's to do with the new junior leaving cert curriculums. Um, so it's really invaluable, those modules. And then also in second year, you'll start looking at the history of education, developmental psychology and uh, the philosophical um, details to do with education, all that stuff. They're essay based again. So we have a writing centre for that. So that's the kind of teacher training from first and second year and a little bit of third year. Um, but it's nicely broken down throughout. It's not overwhelming. OK, and then in third and fourth year, the main things that everyone gets excited about are the placements. So your first ever placement is in third year. 
So by third year, you should have a strong foundation in chemistry, physics and maths. And that's the reason it's in third year. You'll be so confident in those subjects. And it really stood to me going into my placement there in November time. I just recently did it there, um, doing all those maths and physics modules. And then when students were asking me harder questions that were above and beyond leaving search uh, textbooks, I was able to answer them. So it was great. That's a six week placement. So it was from kind of mid-November to December time. And it was a lovely time of year because it was coming up to Christmas. There was tests going on. Everyone was excited. So that's for only junior cert classes. So you'd be teaching first, second and third year. Some teachers, including myself, we had to teach fifth year or TY. But it was grand. It was nice practice. And your teachers in the school will help you with that. And they'll be in the room with you. So don't worry about that. And then in fourth year, it's a full semester. So it's from January to the end of the school year. Um, and that's leaving cert classes. So you mainly have TY and fifth year groups. So there are the two placements. Tips for future student teachers. OK, keep your notes from school. As I said earlier, for maths and physics and chemistry, you will be starting out with leaving cert base stuff and then growing beyond that but it is helpful for you to have those notes and just revise them a little bit um, just so you're not starting completely from scratch. The second thing then is get to know students in second and third and final year from science education and that's the reason I set up the peer mentorship because you know third and fourth years we've been there done that and we can actually give you genuine advice that's useful to you. Um, shake the shyness away OK, I know as teachers, we're naturally confident and we love talking and presenting, but there are a few of us that are quite shy, but we do like to teach. So you will get rid of that in first year, I promise you, with the micro teaching and all the practice that you'll have presenting, it will be no problem to you. So if you're a shy person at the moment or you think you're too quiet to be a teacher, forget it. You'll be perfect by the end of first year, but the end of the first month of first year, um, you will definitely not be shy anymore. And then the last thing is grinds. Okay. Probably most of you are doing grinds at the moment. I'm a grinds teacher. All the people in my course have done grinds in the past. They're a great way for you to practice teaching. So either on in person or on Zoom, um, just getting your notes together, practicing teaching maths, finding out what works for you, what works for certain students. And then when you go to placement, you won't feel as overwhelmed because you've been there. OK, so I would highly recommend you do some sort of grinds before you start placement. OK, so in third year, this is the major opportunity that DCU provides for science education students. It's the STEM teacher internship. OK, so you can work for a center, you can work for AIB, Microsoft. There's loads of partnering companies um, all around Dublin and it's for pre-service post-primary teachers. So it's 12 weeks in the summertime. It's fully paid, it's full time and all the skills and the experience that you have would be invaluable to you, not just as a teacher, but in the future, if you want to go into industry, you'll have that in your back pocket. So that's brilliant. That's something that's unique to DCU. Um, and again, that's at the end of third year in the summertime. I'm actually applying for it at the moment. So there you go. Um, any further questions? So I had to fly through that, obviously, because it's a short presentation. But anything in particular that I mentioned that you want me to give you the full spiel on, that's me over there. OK, on UniBuddy. Just give me a quick little message on it and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. It doesn't matter how small the question is or how silly you think it is, anything, I'd be happy to answer.